just days away from Election Day, and Indiana's voter turnout is something that hasn't been seen in years. Plus, the U.S. reaching a record-breaking seven-day case average for COVID-19. We've got those details just ahead. Plus, I'm tracking rain chances as well as cooler temperatures as we head into the overnight hours. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. With just over a week until Election Day, people across the country and here in Delaware County are voting. Good night. I'm, good evening. I'm Grace Wankowski. And I'm Manny Keister. Thank you for joining us. Some are voting by absentee ballot, while others are waiting hours in line to cast their vote. NewsLink Indiana's Tyler Brummett was at the Delaware County building today. Tyler, how long were those people waiting out there? Well, Grace and Annie, the wait could have been worse. They were waiting for just over an hour today. That's a far cry than the amount of time some were in line this weekend. And as people are showing up in droves, Indiana's voter turnout is one that hasn't been seen in years. I was out here, I don't know, an hour ago and um, saw the line and had somewhere I had to be, so I went there and came back. The line Monday afternoon at the Delaware County building all the way out the door. It wasn't bad, it was just about an hour. But people like Mariah Stevens may be the lucky one. A worker at this polling location telling NewsLink people who voted in Delaware County this weekend had to wait nearly two hours. In Indianapolis, some people reporting wait times over seven hours. The Indiana Secretary of State's office saying over one million people have voted, surpassing Indiana's total back in 2016. Nearly 700,000 of those votes this year in person. I know that there's so many people that have voted early this year that don't normally vote. I think it's great. People are caring enough to get out there early and to stand in line for so long and willing to vote. One of the several driving forces behind the increase in votes may come as no surprise. The response to the COVID pandemic. It's made the most difference to me so far um, in my personal life. But other hot button issues that are dominating 2020 are also pushing people out to vote. This is what democracy looks like. Black Lives Matter. Why? Because it's not fair. And with just over a week to go until Election Day, in a year that's been anything but normal, voters are hoping their voices are heard and want others to do the same. Just do it. Make time. It feels like it's a way to get my voice heard. Now, I do want to point out that I did reach out to the Delaware County Clerk's Office for the county's voter numbers, but have not yet heard back. Election Day is now just eight days away and we do want to let you know that NewsLink Indiana is your election headquarters. Be sure to join us on election night. That is a week from tomorrow, November 3rd. We've got a special one hour edition of NewsLink Indiana on tap for you from nine until 10. We've got live coverage across Delaware County. We've going to, we're going to be talking about those local state as well as the national races and we're also going to have in-studio analysis. Again, ladies, that is one week from tomorrow, November 3rd, right here on NewsLink Indiana. All right, thank you, Tyler. It's the final week of the presidential race and Republicans are taking the lead. And not because of early voting or presidential poll numbers. But because President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Judge Amy Coney Barrett, was confirmed by the Senate and is now being sworn in. This makes her the third justice picked by the president to put, put on the Supreme Court. Daryl Forge is in, is in Washington to explain the process and how this could impact the presidential election. We could have waited to after the election very easily and not divided our country further. Barrett's addition to the court solidifies President Trump's judicial legacy and submits a conservative majority that could impact future decisions on health care and even potential disputes in the presidential election. A lot of what we've done over the last four years will be undone sooner or later by the next election. They won't be able to do much about this for a long time to come. In response, some Democrats suggested expanding the size of the Supreme Court, also known as court packing. Democratic nominee Joe Biden has not indicated where he stands on expanding the court, but said if elected, he would establish a bipartisan commission to explore changes to the Supreme Court. I will uh, ask them to, over uh, 180 days, come back to me with recommendations as to how to uh, reform the court system because it's getting... Vice President Mike Pence will not preside over the vote as planned amid an outbreak of COVID-19 among his staff. The confirmation expected to land largely along party lines could also sway voters deciding key Senate contests looking to shift the balance of power in the chamber. In Washington, I'm Daryl Forges.
And the latest in your coronavirus headlines today, the U.S. just hit its highest seven-day case average since the start of the pandemic. The seven-day average hit nearly 69,000 yesterday. The previous record happened at the end of July. Friday and Saturday had the two highest single days of new cases, with more than 83,000 cases added each day. Health experts that have been warning about a spike in cases in the fall and the winter say it's here. More than 225,000 Americans have died from the virus. The Trump administration says it's speeding up the distribution of rapid COVID-19 tests across the U.S. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, states are on track to receive nearly 37 million antigen tests by the end of this week. The department says the goal is to protect seniors and help states continue to reopen. Officials say these tests are part of the 150 million that the federal government already planned to distribute nationwide. Developer of the test, Abbott, Abbott Laboratories, says tests deliver results in 15 minutes. And back here on campus, two more people tested positive for COVID-19 in the past 24 hours. This brings the total estimated active cases on campus to 44. The dashboard is estimating 1,070 people have recovered from the virus on campus, and the total number of cases reported on campus since the beginning of the school year is 1,114. <laughs> And with the pandemic, many may feel alone or disconnected from their family and friends. But one resource on campus is trying to help people feel more connected with others. NewsLink Indiana's Catherine Segal tells us what it is. The Writing Studio is an event where students, alumni, and staff come together for a weekly craft class to build connections during the pandemic. In the creative writing program, we place a high priority on um, community as essential to the writing process. And we really believe that um, writing doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's not a solitary experience. Now it is harder for students to get together to write, making the writer's studio a perfect place for connection, despite the anxious feelings towards the pandemic. It does seem to build a possibility for connection. And, um, and, it, and it's a possibility even in the pandemic during when we are um, self-isolating uh, words reach beyond um, the isolation. This year differs from prior years because now they are able to reach alumni, which can create an even better sense of community. Because of this pandemic, you know, we thought we thought maybe we could adapt it for our students and again to reach alumni. Even though the pandemic is difficult for everyone, the Writer's Studio is a way for students to come together and put their feelings into words. It actually lets us be more informal and it draws people from many different workshops so um it's it lets us be more maybe down to earth or something in muncie i'm katherine seagal newslink indiana if you would like to participate there will be a writer studio tomorrow night from seven to eight to find out more information you can go to ballstatedaily.com now that looks like something fun to do inside oh yeah anything inside today it started out pretty promising went kind of rainy and it kind of took me by surprise maddie is this something we should be expecting a little more often well grace and annie definitely grab a, an umbrella and a jacket as you're heading out tonight as we're expecting widespread rain chances and cooler temperatures tonight taking a look at our current temperatures we're currently at 47 in muncie 44 up to our north in fort wayne 45 in indianapolis and off to our west where they're a bit colder they're in the upper 30s and as we head into the overnight hours tonight we'll see temperatures stay pretty steady in the 40s going from the mid 40s down to the lower 40s during the overnight hours we end with a low at 37 degrees those rain chances continue overnight so make sure you have that umbrella with you rain chances taper off by early morning and we'll have winds out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I'll have more coming up in my full weather forecast. Thank you, Maddie. Learn the significance behind one of Ball State's iconic statues. Plus, one airline company is taking new measures against people who aren't following their COVID-19 protocols. All those details after the break. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students.
anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back. The David Owsley Museum of Art is home to over 11,000 works of art here on campus, and two of them were made by Daniel Chester French, the designer and sculptor of Beneficence. Newslink Indiana's Mackenzie Rupp tells us the significance behind the pieces of art. The statue known as Beneficence is located directly in front of the David Owsley Museum of Art. Its creator, Daniel Chester French, has done more than just provide Ball State with an institutional icon. So for our Abraham Lincoln, um, that is in the museum galleries right now. That is actually sort of based on a larger sculpture that is in Nebraska that was commissioned um, by, by uh, some, some government agency. French has created other statues, including the Republic, which is in Chicago, as well as the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah, he was an extremely popular American sculptor. Um, he did a lot of these memorials. He did the Lincoln Memorial in um, Washington, D.C. Brunch has also created a statue of John Harvard for Harvard University, as well as a famous statue located in Concord, Massachusetts. So we do have another sculpture by French in our collection. It's in storage. You'll be able to look at this sculpture um, on the collections website. And this one is, again, a smaller sculpture after a larger one based on um, a, Minuteman, a Minuteman sculpture. Beneficence was the last statue French created. It was commissioned before his death in 1931 and installed in 1937. In Muncie, Mackenzie Rupp, Newslink, Indiana. If you're interested in seeing what everything DOMA has to offer, you can go to BallStateDaily.com. And Delta Airlines has banned more than 400 people from flying for not following its mask policy. In a new memo to employees, Delta's CEO says 460 people are on its no-fly list for refusing to wear a mask. Delta began requiring passengers to wear masks on flights May 4th and says the policy is to protect the health and safety of both passengers and crew members. All major airlines now require passengers to wear masks in the absence of any new regulations from the federal government. The parent company of Duncan and Baskin Robbins chains, Michael Private. Duncan Brands confirms it's in talks with Inspire Brands, a company trying to buy Duncan. The New York Times says it has two sources who say the deal could be worth $8.8 .8 billion. Duncan dropped donuts from its name two years ago to present itself as a beverage company. This year it closed about 800 shops. It's set to announce its earnings Thursday. Homebound and bored because of the coronavirus pandemic, you're not alone. Lots of families are turning to an oldie for entertainment. Sales of the classic board game Monopoly are skyrocketing and toy company Hasbro is seeing the benefits. The company reported a 21% jump in gaming sales because people are looking for ways to occupy their time. According to Hasbro's earnings release, branded Star Wars and the Mandalorian toys also delivered strong revenue growth. However, Hasbro's overall revenue dropped 4% because of TV and film production delays. Still, CEO Brian Goldner says the company is expecting a good holiday season. And there are probably a few words that come to mind when you think of a crackling fireplace. Warm, cozy, relaxing, delicious maybe. Well, that's what Kentucky Fried Chicken wants you to 
to think when you use KFC's now famous fried chicken fire log. It was a big hit since it sold out two years in a row. You can get your own at a select de Walmart department stores and on walmart.com. Grace, I'm thinking it's a great day for a fire log. Monopoly, what do you think? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Maddie, how are those temperatures looking? Definitely a great evening for some indoor activities as we're seeing cold temperatures and widespread rain moving through most of the viewing area. I'll have more after the break. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. Go back and change it all. If I could go back, I would. But I can't. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. The time is now 9.17 and you're taking a live look at campus. Maddie, how is the weather looking this week? Well, you'll want to grab an umbrella as you head out tonight as we're seeing widespread rain showers across most of the region. This rain system making its way from the southwest to the northeast right now. All counties getting in on some rain with the exception of northern Grant County. They're staying dry right now. As we zoom out over the region, we can see a lot of this rain coming from southern Illinois. That'll make its way here into central Indiana during the overnight hours tonight. Now with this rain that's coming in over this evening and overnight hours, this is bringing cold air to the region. We're currently four degrees cooler than we were 24 hours ago and places out to the west are 5 to 10 degrees cooler than they were this time yesterday. Now as we take a look at current temperatures we're currently sitting in the 40s across most of central Indiana. We're at 47 here in Muncie, 44 up to our north in Fort Wayne, 45 in Indianapolis and those places off to our west in western Indiana and Illinois are in the upper 30s right now. And as we head into the overnight hours temperatures look to remain fairly steady in the 40s. We're going to be dropping down from the mid 40s down to the lower 40s during the overnight hours. We'll end with a low of 37 degrees by daybreak tomorrow. Plenty of rain expected overnight, those scattered rain chances ending, tapering off by early morning. We'll see winds from the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour overnight. Now, if you're heading out tomorrow, you might still want to grab the umbrella. We could see a couple of scattered rain chances during the early morning hours. We'll start out 39 and overcast at 8 a.m., 43 by noon, mostly cloudy and topping out at only 49 degrees by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Quite a cold day in store. Now, I'm tracking your next rain chances for later on in the week. We do remain clear and dry for most of Wednesday before our next rain system comes in from the south on Thursday. We're tracking widespread rain coming up into most of Indiana Thursday morning widespread rain covering most of the state by Thursday afternoon. This continues into the early morning hours on Friday before this system departs off to our east early Friday morning into the lunchtime hours. And then we clear out for the weekend. Plenty of sunshine expected. And with this sunshine for the weekend, that starts us off at a with a drying trend for the beginning of November. You can see most of the country, especially the Midwest, below average in terms of precipitation as we kick off November. Now also as we start off November, you can see the west 
western half of the U.S. well above average in terms of temperatures and here in the Midwest we remain right about normal to slightly below average in terms of temperatures with Maine and Texas seeing below average temperatures for the next six to ten days. Now over the next six to ten days here in the Midwest here in Muncie we'll see a high of 58 on Wednesday, 52 on Thursday with those rain chances and then the mid to upper 50s for the weekend with plenty of sunshine in play. So we're seeing rain and clouds so kind of a dreary start to the week and then plenty of sunshine as we head into November. You know I was gonna say Maddie I'm not into those clouds I'm really not excited for that but glad to see those temperatures rising thank you so much Most Maddie. Definitely. And a Ball State professor has earned an award from the Mid-American Conference for her excellence in teaching. And three Delaware County volleyball teams are now headed to semi-state. We'll have all those details and more next in sports. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow, oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. When I think of kids going to school hungry, hunger, homelessness, in this land of plenty, seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Weeknights, NewsLink Indiana brings you the news before you go to bed. But Friday mornings, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. We've got the latest news headlines. Freezing temperatures have set in all the way down in Louisiana. One man dead after flooding in Venice, Italy. Up to the minute weather conditions. Cold temperatures are the story this morning. And of course, lots of fun. That's, it is not what funny. What on earth is happening I there? I feel sorry for the little guy. Apparently I've got my socks on. Weather. Annie with her curly hair, which is actually never curly. Join us Friday mornings at 8 on Facebook Live. Welcome back. I'm Nathaniel Smith with sports. Ball State professor Jennifer Paleonis has been recognized with the 2020 MAC Faculty Award for Student Success. Paleonis becoming not only the first Cardinal to win this award, but the first recipient ever as the award was introduced this year. The professor being recognized for her work as the director of the Center for Emerging Media Design and Development. Paleonis has worked on projects with the Indiana State Museum, the Professor Garfield Foundation, and USA Volleyball, where her students created a documentary on men's and boys' volleyball. And we had a team of undergraduate students who um, did the 30-minute documentary, and they got to travel to California and hang out with the Olympic team, and they traveled to several um, cities around, around the country clover, uh, covering club volleyball. Um, I think everything that we do as faculty um, is really all about student success. So to be recognized for my work in that area, I think is kind of one of the highest honors of my career, really. Westdale's football season ended this past week after losing in the sectional playoffs, but the team is already looking into next season. The Warriors having their best season in two years and one two-point conversion away from winning their first sectional game since 2017. Although the team wanting to win the sectional game, Coach Brad Hess sees this more as a growing opportunity for Westdale. After overcoming many problems on and off the field, Coach Hess sees... The big thing for us was we talked about our mental preparation and our physical preparation and then it was the mental effort and our physical effort that's what's we've hurt ourselves a lot and we know that with some of the mental things mistakes we've made so uh, we wanted to take care of that and I think we did and this was uh, again what it's all about out here. Westdale was 3-6 and six on the season and lost to Tri-Central 40-38 in double overtime. 
And now moving to the volleyball court, Delaware County crowning three regional champions this weekend. Class 1A Cowan taking the win three sets to none over Seton Catholic. Gracie Conway leading the way with 18 kills. Then Class 2A Wapahani honoring its lone senior, Mallory Summers, who is out battling, battling medical issues. Summers being presented with the game ball after the big win. And finally, the Yorktown Tigers knocking out Brownsburg this coming after they trailed 23-24 in the fourth set. Now taking a look at the schedule for Saturday afternoon's semi-state matchups. Cowan taking on Pioneer at 1 o'clock. This match was originally set to be at Frankfurt, but has been moved to Lafayette Jefferson. Wapahani facing Fairfield at 4 o'clock at Huntington North. And then Yorktown taking on Providence at the Jennings County location at 6. This is the first time since 2012 that three Delaware County teams have won regionals in the same season. Ron Rivera is Washington's head football coach, is cancer free today. He completed his final treatments earlier today after being diagnosed of skin cancer back in August. As Rivera was leaving, he was bombarded with confetti in celebration and was given a card signed by the staff. Doctors do think that Rivera will make a full recovery. Now Guys, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see that Rivera, you know, overcame that obstacle. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, him, his family, and, uh, and uh, the football team are just all really relieved. Exactly. It's great news that he's recovering, and we are wishing him, his family, course, and his team course. the best. Absolutely inspiring. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. A new treat is hitting the market. Find out what it is next. And we'll take a final look at your weather for the week. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. Einstein Bros has your next snack, and it's a fun kind. These sweet treats work for celebrations, but really the only thing they share with the traditional bagels is the shape. They're actually donuts. One variety called the churro is stuffed with cream cheese, buttercream frosting, and coated with cinnamon sugar. And the birthday cake version has chocolate frosting and confetti sprinkles. Party bagels hit select locations around the country November 12th, and those sound absolutely incredible. The best thing about them, spring, summer, winter, doesn't matter. They're going to be good. Maddie, what are we going to be looking at to enjoy some of these fall sweet treats? Well, the next couple of days might not be so enjoyable to some people. We're going to be seeing some rain chances and some scattered clouds in there. Uh, some slight rain chances Tuesday morning at, with a high of 49, a high of 48 on 58, excuse me, on Wednesday, partly cloudy skies. Rain chances return to the region on Thursday through Friday morning, a high of 52 both of those days. And then this weekend for the beginning of November, we start out with highs in the mid 50s and plenty of sunshine to kick off the start of November. So it's going to be a great weekend to be outside after those rain chances this week.
Thank you, Maddie. That's all for tonight at Newslink Indiana. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night at 9, streaming live on the Newslink Indiana Facebook page. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.